Welcome to Pearls for Success. My name is Anita Parhar. I work with children, staff, and parents in schools. This show is dedicated to those of you who are new to Canada. Each episode, we'll be talking about different issues related to health, education, finance, and law. This is my co-host. My name is Gurdeep Parhar, and I'm a family doctor. We really hope you enjoy these episodes. We hope that the pearls you learn about will improve your life and the lives of your family members. If you have any suggestions about this episode or topics for future episodes, please go to our webpage. We'd love to hear from you, www.pearlsforsuccess.com. Before we start today's episode, we'd like to share some words from our sponsors. Anita, what's the topic for today? Today's topic is sun protection and sun safety. That's a great topic. No matter where you are in the country, sun safety is very important. Let's watch a role play of four friends out in the sun. It's finally the summer, Thomas. I've been waiting all year to go to the beach. I agree, Will. You know, it's sunny weather, it's nice and hot, you can go swimming. I can't wait. I just hope mm -hmm. Wilson and Elizabeth show up soon. Yes, and here they are. Hey. hey. You guys ready to go to the beach? Oh yes, you bet we're ready. More than ready. Have you guys checked out the weather forecast for today? Well, it's a high 28 this afternoon with a chance of clouds. The perfect weather to go to the beach. No, I meant the UV index. Aren't you guys afraid of getting sunburned? The UV index? I don't know much about that, but I do know about sunburns. I remember when I got a sunburn last year. You know, I wasn't quite sure exactly when it happened, but when I got home, my skin was red and it was hot, and the next day it was painful to the touch. Worse still, a couple of days afterwards, it was still peeling away. It wasn't pleasant. Thankfully, I don't think I had done any permanent damage, though. You know, I don't notice any differences. Yeah. Well, it doesn't look like you have any freckles from your time out in the sun. Just to be safe though, you should probably have a baseball cap like me. Actually, we thought about that, you know? Will and I were at the Safeway, saw this on sale, SPF 15. Even says it's waterproof. Look, there's a guy swimming right on the bottle there. Yeah, look at that. Huh, wow, that's awesome. Although I think we should put a bit more sunscreen on after we go swimming. Why the worry about that? I heard that a good suntan is actually protective against sunburn. In fact, a friend of mine will go to a tanning salon just to prepare for the summer. Why does your friend think like that? Well, I think he told me that it's actually safer to get a tan in a tanning salon versus out in the sunlight. Well, he also said he wants some vitamin D too. To be fair though, he goes to a tanning salon all the time throughout the year, not just in the summer. Well, I think the opposite is actually true. I don't think you can get a very healthy suntan from just going to the tanning salon. I also think it's very hygienic to share tanning beds at the tanning salon. Also, have you seen those goggles that people have to wear to protect their eyes at the tanning salon? Totally not my style. Hey, speaking of eyewear, do you guys all have sunglasses as well? Thomas, where are your sunglasses? I almost forgot. Found these at the dollar store. Check it out. Oh my god, the dollar store. Not bad, yeah. right? No, no, for a dollar. Well, do they protect against both UVA and UVB rays? Wait, you mean there are different UV rays? Yeah, oh. yeah. Yeah, well, when I was getting my sunglasses, I had to check for a little sticker that said that it would protect against both UVA and UVB. Did you have a sticker in your glasses? I just thought darker lenses were better. That's all I looked for. Mm. Mm. I don't know. But you know what? Going back to the skin. Last summer, when I was, when I was here at the beach, I got a tanning line here and here. This year, I want to try to avoid that. So I'm thinking of actually applying sunscreen only to the area that's exposed so I get a more even tan. What do you guys think? Awesome idea? I don't think that's a very good idea. I don't think it's good to have your skin exposed to the sun without sunscreen. Haven't you heard of stories where people get skin cancer along the side of their back? Why the worry? Last year, we were here at the beach. I didn't get skin cancer. You didn't get skin cancer. Thomas didn't get skin cancer. Or Elizabeth, she didn't get skin cancer either. I don't think we should be worried, should we? Um, I guess I can't really explain that. I've just heard about something like that before. Hmm. Well, anyway, you've got your sunglasses, I've got my cap, so why don't we just bring that sunscreen along with us and then maybe we can apply it down there if we want to. Um, but you know what? I also know a specialist uh, who does skin stuff, so why don't I ask him and then I can come back and give you guys the answers and then we could just head to the beach right now, eh? 
I like that. Let's go. Wow. I found that interaction quite interesting. Uh, and the reason why I say that is because there seems to be so much misconception and misunderstanding about what you should do to protect yourself when you go into the sun. I think we should try to sort out those misconceptions and learn some pearls about sun safety. In order to do that, we should talk to Dr. Harvey Louie, who's a dermatologist working at VGH, UBC, and the BC Cancer Agency. Let's see what Dr. Louie has to say. I'm here today speaking with Dr. Harvey Louie, who is Professor of Dermatology at the Skin Care Centre. Um, so, Dr. Louie, thank you so much for joining us today. You're welcome. So, summer is here and many people are very excited because this is the time when they're going to get outside and play sports and um, have their tans. Um, and so, can you give us some, some uh, sun safety tips? Sure. No, I'd be happy to. I think the uh, important thing to realize is that uh, outdoor light mm -hmm. contains um, uh, ultraviolet rays. Yeah. And so you can't see these rays, but they actually uh, have a lot of energy. And the ra these rays, the ultraviolet rays, if they're absorbed into your skin, they can cause a lot of damage. And that's what we're most worried about. So in the short term, the ultraviolet rays can cause burning. And in the long term, the ultraviolet rays can cause skin cancer. Mm -hmm. And they can also cause enough damage to your skin to make you look old. That's what we call photo aging or photo damage. Mm -hmm. Um, and so you say rays, is there more than one ray that we should be worried about? Yeah, so the, 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 um, the energy from the sun contains all sorts of different uh, types of um, radiation or rays. Uh, it contains visible light, which is what makes things bright and what you can see. It contains ultraviolet light. It also contains inf infrared Okay, so infrared is what makes you feel warm. Mm -hmm. The visible light is what makes everything bright. And then the ultraviolet light, that's the part that has the most energy and that's the part that we're most concerned about because those rays are the ones that can cause the most damage to the skin. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what you need to protect yourself from. So the rays that you were talking about, is there a specific, um, I guess, subset of the rays that are more damaging to skin than others? It's the ultraviolet rays. Mm -hmm. So when we divide the ultraviolet rays into uh, UVA and UVB, mm -hmm. um, and um, they, they both can cause effects on the skin. They both can cause damage uh, to the skin, and, and you need to get protection from both of them. It turns out that UVB is uh, absorbed more efficiently into the skin, so it's a little more damaging than UVA. But, but both need to be protected. Okay. So it's not just UVA or UVB, it's both? It's both. It's both. Okay, um, and then how can we go about like protecting ourselves? Yeah, so how do we, so the things you need to do are simple, right? So the things to do would be to change the times you're outside. We know that UVB especially, but also UVA, it's most intense in the middle of the day. So if you're gonna plan your outside activities, you're better off to avoid 11 to three. So if you're going to go out gardening, you know, do it before 11 or do it after 3. If you're going to go outside and play tennis, maybe you're better off to play tennis before 11 or after 3 o'clock. So just shifting the times that you do your outdoor activities is a, is a really big um, way of protecting your skin. Second is to seek the shade. So it's great to be outside. We enjoy it and, you know, it's, it's important to be outdoors, to be fit and to get exercise. Uh, but when you're outside, do your activities out in the shade because there's dramatically less UV, ultraviolet, UVA and UVB when you're in the shade. Okay, so change the times you're outside, mm -hmm. seek the shade. And then the third thing is to wear protective clothing. So it's better to wear hats. It's better to wear broad brim hats rather than just the simple baseball caps. Mm -hmm. Okay, so get a good quality broad brim hat, wear clothing that's protective. So long sleeves are better, long pants are better. I know it's, you know, some people may not feel that that's quite so fashionable, um, but the more you can protect your skin uh, with clothing, the better it, better it is for you. And then the last line of defense would be sunscreens. Okay, so if, if you can't avoid being outside at certain hours, if you can't find shade, if you, you know, uh, you're wearing a bathing suit and you don't have you know, full body coverage with clothing, then your sunscreen is your last line of defense and that's, that's what you need to apply to your skin. So it's, it's a set of 
things that you need to do, some very simple that can really make a huge difference in terms of protecting you from um, sun exposure. It's very interesting because I think most people usually reach for the sunscreen first mm -hmm. before doing all of those other things, and you're advocating that it's the reverse. It is, and, and the, when I talk to my patients, I say it's, it's actually quite simple. If in your car you have seat belts mm -hmm. and airbags, right. right? But just because you have seat belts and airbags doesn't mean that you'll, you don't obey traffic and doesn't mean that you don't drive carefully. Mm -hmm. The seat belts and airbags are only there last line of defense. Same thing with the sunscreens. Mm -hmm. You should do everything else, change your behavior or modify your behavior to protect yourself. And then if all else fails, you have that sunscreen as your last line of defense. So it's not just one thing, it's a, a series of things, mm -hmm. just little minor adjustments to your lifestyle that can make a huge difference in terms of you know, preventing sunburns mm -hmm. and uh, preventing skin cancer mm -hmm. and making you look younger in the long term. So how do sunscreens work to protect us from the sun? Okay, so sunscreens work. Um, by putting a film of material on the skin that will basically filter out the ultraviolet rays. So it's like a, um, a special film of material that absorbs the harmful rays so that the harmful rays, the UV, the ultraviolet A and the ultraviolet B, don't penetrate right through to the skin. So they absorb that energy and prevent that energy from reaching into your cells and causing damage. And that, that basically is how sunscreens work. Um, and then, so does everybody need sunscreen or can you get away with it if your skin is maybe darker? Let's put it this way. Everybody can, the, the sun is non-discriminatory. An ultraviolet rays can harm any cell and ultraviolet rays can harm any skin. Doesn't matter if you're dark or light, mm -hmm. the sun or the ultraviolet rays can damage your skin. So as far as I'm concerned, as far as all dermatologists are concerned, any skin can be uh, potentially damaged by the ultraviolet rays. So everybody needs to practice uh, sun safety. Mm -hmm. uh, I have patients who are very dark skin and I, a number of them have developed skin cancers. So just because you have dark skin doesn't mean that you are um, you know, immune or that you don't have a chance of developing the damage. Your chance is lower, but it's still a real possibility if you get enough light. Okay. So sunscreen for everybody. Sun protection for everybody and sunscreen is part of that total package, okay? Um, and I've also heard of sunblock and sun tan lotion. Mm -hmm. Is there a difference between sunscreen and all of these? Yeah, so the term sun tan lotion, I mean, that's clearly a no-no. In the good old days, um, uh, when people deliberately wanted to get a sun tan, what you would do is you would apply oil to your skin, okay? So when you apply oil to your skin, you actually make the skin look more transparent. And so you actually allow more ultraviolet to reach the skin. So if you wanted to enhance your tan, you would use a suntan oil. Now, of course, we know that in the process of enhancing your tan, you're also enhancing how much ultraviolet gets into your skin and how much damage you're sustaining. So suntan oils, those kind of products are definitely not on. I mean, th those are not things that we recommend people use, and they really should be banned from the market as far as we're concerned. The term sunblock uh, really refers to those um, really thick, almost makeup-like products, you know, the white um, pastes mm -hmm. or the colored paste, mm -hmm. and, and those, will, if you, those will totally block the light from reaching the skin. So you notice that if someone puts a sunblock on their skin, um, you can't see the skin anymore because you just see this white film. So if, if you can't see it, then the sun can't see it, so that's why we call it a sunblock. Uh, it's not necessary to use a sunblock routinely um, because most people don't want to look around, you know, go around looking like their face is all painted. Um, you know, there's really good sunscreen technology that you can use that will give you a high degree of protection without having to, you know, put on war paint on your face more or less. Uh, but that's what a sunblock is, and we don't really emphasize using sunblocks because we don't feel it's necessary to go that far. Uh, but if you want to, it, it definitely works. Okay. Um, and then associated with sunscreen is the SPF, which mm -hmm. sometimes I, I think can be confusing. I mean, sometimes I find it a little bit mm -hmm. confusing. Can you talk a little bit more about SPF? Yeah, so SPF, sun protection factor, it's a 
basically the way that we use to rate the effectiveness of the sunscreen. You remember I said earlier that sunscreens work because they filter and absorb the ultraviolet light. So uh, a sunscreen with a high SPF number is much better at filtering the ultraviolet light. It's much better at absorbing it and therefore protecting your skin than a lower sun protection factor. Uh, to calculate the SPF, we have to do these experiments or these tests with human volunteers. And basically the number just means how much longer you can be out in the sun without burning if you have the sunscreen on versus not having the sunscreen on. So if I have a sun protection factor, an SPF product of 30, mm -hmm. that means that I, would have to st I could stay out in the sun 30 times longer without getting sunburn than if I was out in the sun without that uh, product. Mm -hmm. In general, uh, we like to recommend that nowadays people use products, sun sunscreens that have an SPF of 30 or higher. So you can have 30, 60, 70, it even goes up to 100. The really the minimum that we recommend is 30. Um, in my patients, I actually, you know, the general recommendation is 30. I actually like to push it a little bit. And in my patients, I even like them to use a 60 because I think that level of protection is, is just a little bit better uh, for protecting them from the sun. Um, so should I try to go as high as possible with the SPF or is there a certain point at which like the extra protection doesn't really work. Yeah, so there's lots of discussion back and forth, like what number is you know the most appropriate. Actually, more important than the number, once you get beyond 30, um, it's actually more important to know how much you're putting on. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you're putting on the sunscreen the way you're supposed to put it on, then a 30 is more than adequate. Mm -hmm. uh, but it turns out that most people don't put on enough sunscreen. So, you know, uh, typically people will buy a bottle of sunscreen, it's usually the mom, and she'll buy one bottle and the whole family will use it. And they might expect one bottle to be used for the whole family for the whole season. Clearly that's not enough. Um, if you apply the sunscreen and you rub it and rub it and rub it until you can't see it anymore, it's too thin. It's not actually behaving like an SPF 30 sunscreen. You're not getting enough protection. So. If you're going to use a sunscreen, the proper way to put it on is you take the sunscreen, you put it on your skin, you rub it in, okay, and you rub it in just to the point that you can still see a little bit of the white color. More, more important or just as important as the number is putting it on properly. And so you have to put on enough. And enough means when you rub it into your skin, when you're finished, before you go outside, if you look in the mirror, you should just see a little bit of white. And really, once you go outside when it's so bright, no one can tell that you've got that little bit of white on your skin. You know, they're wearing sunglasses, it's so bright. So inside, it may look unnatural, but once you're outside, it looks fine. And, and then you know you've got the right protection. So long as you're applying enough so that when you're finished, you have a little bit of white, that just a bit of white that's showing, then you know you've put on enough. So the, the two biggest mistakes that we see with sunscreens are not putting on enough and not putting it on all the places that you're supposed to put it on. So for example, on the, on the head, which is where you get most of your sun, people are very good at covering the forehead, the nose, the cheeks, the chin, and usually the ears, but the areas that people forget are behind the ears, okay? And this little area on the neck mm -hmm. behind the ears. That you get a lot of sun exposure when you've got the sun behind you. There's a lot of sun beating down there. And if you know you don't usually see it, you usually don't think of it, so you forget to put the sunscreen on. Yeah, so wherever you have skin and it's gonna be exposed to the sun and not covered up by tight weave clothing, then you need to put your sunscreen. So put on enough and make sure you cover all the areas that are at risk. For sunscreens, are there certain ingredients that I should be looking for? Or? Look for a broad spectrum sunscreen with an SPF 30 or higher. I mean, in my case, I prefer my patients to use even 60, mm -hmm. but use broad spectrum, high SPF. And then the third thing we like to recommend is to look for the logo 
of the Canadian Dermatology Association. Well, Dr. Louis, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us today. You've given us some fabulous information. I think it's going to be absolutely fabulous to the people who are watching us today. So once again, thank oh, you so Oh, it's my pleasure. Much. Yeah. Well, thanks to Dr. Louie, those uh, misunderstandings that in, we initially looked at um, were pretty much cleared up. He gave a lot of information about protection, both wearing clothing and using sunscreen. That's great. Let's look at the same role play again with the same four friends and see how they do in the sun now. Wow, Elizabeth, thank you for that. I didn't know we had to worry about UV ray even though it's raining or cloudy outside. Yeah, I didn't know that either, eh? That's right. I knew we had to check the UV ray index for some reason. Also, we should try to find as much shade as possible. I brought a beach umbrella in case we couldn't find shade. Yeah, so definitely find shade between 12 p.m. and 2 p.m. because that's when I've heard the, the rays are the strongest, right, guys? But you know what? I've also heard that on cloudy days, you can still get a sunburn. So I guess it's always important to take care at the beach. You know, after all that, this beach almost sounds like a dangerous place. Do we still want to stay here? Well, you know what, I think, you know, it's a nice day out to be out in the beach. And as long as we're ready and we're prepared, we should have a good time. We should be safe, eh? Cool. Well, I have my SPF 60. It protects us against UV ray A and B. Um, Thomas, your SPF 15 is also waterproof, but SPF 30 or higher is actually better. Also, if we're going to go swimming, we probably have to apply a bit more after we go swimming. Mm -hmm. Let me apply more of that sunscreen. You can never have enough. In fact, you need a large palmful for your arms, for your legs, for your face, and for your neck. Hey Liz, I noticed you have a really nice wide brim hat. I sure do. That's perfect. Baseball caps would never work. They never provide enough shade for the neck or the head. Yeah, that's what I thought when choosing between this and the baseball hat. Oh, it's getting kind of hot here. I think I'm going to put on this long sleeve uh, shirt. It's light enough so that I can, uh, I'm not going to over sweat, but it's going to provide me with some sun protection. I agree. Will, I think you should talk to your friend about that tanning salon problem. Mm-hmm. Yes, I think he will be surprised to learn that UV rays one of the major causes of wrinkling. Even though you're not sunburned, you still get damage to your skin. I don't want him to be 40 and look like he's 80. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. I don't, I don't think there's such a thing as a healthy tan, right? Like a full tan would give you the same coverage as SPF 4, right? I, ideally, you should need a, an SPF 30 or above to give you full sun protection. And we've got SPF 60, so we're good to go. Yes. I need to persuade him not to go to the tanning salon so often. As well, instead of getting his vitamin D from tanning salons, I should ask him to get them from vitamin D supplements instead. They're cheap, effective, and don't damage your skin. Yeah, just like these. Ah, perfect. Oh, I'll give them to him. Cool. So, UV rays from sun tanning salons can be several times stronger than the UV rays coming from the sun. So if a person gets sunburned from the sun for several hours, it can just take several minutes before you get a sunburn from the tanning salon. Sunburns are dangerous. Did you know that if you just get five sunburns any time in your life, whether that's outside or in a tanning salon, that doubles your risk of getting melanoma. And that's the deadliest type of skin cancer. Holy cow. Yeah. Well, you know what? It's also important that we're all wearing sunglasses and that we have adequate eye protection, right? So, because I've heard, you know, you can't see UV rays. They're everywhere, but they're very damaging to our eyes as well. So, yeah. So, I mean, when I was going to buy sunglasses, I always checked for stickers. Is that what you guys did as well? Just yeah. to make sure that it would provide both UVA and UVB coverage? These awesome. ones too. Mm. Right. Well, now we're ready to go to the beach, I think. Well, we're I'm done ready. for sun safety. I'm ready. But don't forget about dehydration. I brought along some healthy snacks and fruits and oh. water bottles for everyone. Excellent. Jeez, Thank Wilson. you. You think of everything. Where do you get your information from? Well, I like to visit a website. It's easy to remember. It's www.healthyfamiliesbc.ca. Check Let's go now. Let's go, yeah. It's good to see some good sun safety there. I wonder if it's possible, Anita, if you summarize the pearls Dr. Louis gave. Sure. He had two general pearls. One was to modify your lifestyle, and the second had to do with actually using sunscreen. In terms of modifying your lifestyle, Dr. Louis suggested that when going out in the sun, wear protective clothing. 
So wear long sleeve clothing instead of short sleeve. Wear longer pants or I guess longer shorts rather than um, short shorts to cover as much uh, of your body with clothing as you can. And to wear a broad brimmed hat to protect your face from the sun. The other is to watch when you go out into the, into the sunlight. Try to stay out of the sunlight between the hours of 11 in the morning and 3 p.m. And if you do go out, make sure that you seek shade. And the other had to do with sunscreen. Be sure to buy sunscreen that has an SPF or 30 or higher. I'm saying 30, but he suggested 60 would be great. And also make sure that you apply sunscreen to all unprotected parts of your face or your body that don't have clothing, especially behind the ears and behind the neck. That's great, Anita. If you have any comments or feedback about today's episode or have suggestions for future episodes, we would love to hear from you. Please go to our webpage, www.pearlsforsuccess.com. Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you will join us next week when we share more pearls to help you and your family.